Well, good morning. Uh, I am Pastor Kyle, and I just want to thank you so much uh, for joining us online at Crossview uh, Church. And I know online church is a little bit new uh, to many of us, uh, but I just want to encourage us. You know, God can still work in our hearts and our minds, transforming us even in this way. I want to encourage you uh, to engage with us online, whether that's in the comments on Facebook or the chat section on our website. Uh, we'll do our best to engage with you there, and that's a really great way to uh, talk together, to request prayer, those kinds of things. In fact, we're going to be doing our online services a little bit different. Those are, there's a note section in our uh, website platform where you'll see some questions that we can talk about throughout um, our time together, and we really want to encourage you to do that. Uh, I also just really want to encourage you to take this opportunity to request prayer, whether that's through Facebook Messenger or by clicking uh, Request Prayer on our website. It's a really, it's a private conversation and it's a really great way to do that. Here's a beginning thought for us this morning. That Jesus changes us from being fear-based people to peace-filled people. That's such an important reality for us today as we face the uncertainty around the coronavirus, loss of employment, sickness, quarantine, and all that's going on. But you know, before Jesus was even born, the book of Isaiah called him the coming Savior and the Prince of Peace. And that's what I want to talk today to you about. We hear scripture usually, this particular scripture about Jesus being the Prince of Peace, usually around Christmas time. We read in Isaiah 9, verse 6, For a child is born to us, a son is given. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. You know, 600 years later in the Gospel of John, just before Jesus' death and resurrection, Jesus turns to his disciples, his closest friends, and he says in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Then he says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Aren't those great words for us today? Jesus told his disciples not to be afraid that he will give us his peace, that he gives it to us. Both these passages in John and Isaiah are just incredible scriptures and very encouraging to us right now. But there's a reality that for many of us, uh, is true that even though we read these and we know these, we still worry and we're still so fearful about so many things, especially during these uncertain days. You know, fear often stays somewhere in the corners of our heart and mind, whether we pay attention to it or not. It's there. The problem with fear is that it can grip us and redirect our actions away from loving God and others to a self-centered only focus. So let me ask you this question. What about you? What fears might exist in your life? I wanna encourage you to talk about that in the comments section as you're watching this. What fears might be gripping your heart? You know, some of the most common fears uh, for all of us come in these kinds of things, in these kinds of ways. Worry about what the future looks like. Worry about our health. We worry about our job. We worry about our loved ones, our kids. We worry if we're going to be found out as a failure, or we worry that we might never achieve our personal goals, whatever those might be. And yet we hear in the scripture from John 14 and verse 27, where Jesus says to us, and we'll read this a couple of times as we continue on, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I don't give to you as the world gives, so don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And I hope that as, as the Spirit is speaking to you, there's this tension that's happening about what we're experiencing now and what Jesus has told us. You know that one of the most, uh, one of the most common commandments in the Bible is do not be afraid or fear not. Now, please hear me correctly here. I'm not saying to be unwise. Right? I think, uh, for example, it's very appropriate, even loving to others, to heed the recommendations given to us about washing our hands or avoiding public gatherings, social distancing, and those kinds of things. Right now, those actions can literally save lives, and we should be doing our part. But even in the face of something like COVID-19, 
we as followers of Jesus do not fear because the way of Jesus is peace. It's his peace that he gives to us. Now this can be difficult because what it means is that we really have to trust Jesus to meet all our needs, our spiritual needs, our emotional needs, our relational needs, and even our physical needs. We have to move away from fear and into trusting God to meet very practical realities in our life. You see, fear the way that it works, and I think we all know this to some degree, it's often future-oriented. It preoccupies a space that doesn't exist yet, right? It's mentally placing ourselves ahead of the present moment. It's anticipating something that hasn't happened and isn't a reality. But we're worried about it because often we can't control it. We don't know what's going to happen. We want to control, but we can't, and so we're fearful of it. Fear can pin us down in the present over something that is an uncertain possibility in the future. And the Bible and Jesus tell us not to do that. Because when we let fear rule our hearts, it means that we kind of move Jesus over to the side. And we say, Jesus, you know what? We're going to do our best to take care of this. That's why uh, where Jesus' words in John 14 are so powerful and reorienting for all of us. You see, the hope that Jesus brings through the peace that he gives us leads to a different kind of future. One of trusting God no matter what comes, no matter the situation, no matter what we face, no matter how dire things might get, we are trusting Jesus. Where is Jesus in your heart and mind in these days? I'd like to give you a little context for John 14. Uh, here in John 14, Jesus is about to face death by crucifixion. This conversation happens at the end of Jesus' ministry with his disciples at the Last Supper. Think about this setting. Jesus is about to face his death in the worst possible way. Life is about to get really scary for Jesus and his followers. And yet we hear Jesus say, Hey friends, before I go, I want to tell you something. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Let that sink into your hearts. In fact, he says, I'm going to leave you with something. I'm going to leave you with peace. Not just any peace. I'm going to leave you with my peace. So don't be afraid. Wow. This is incredible. Uh, what's ahead for Jesus? We know it's suffering and pain and death. But Jesus knows that the resurrection is ahead as well. He isn't letting fear rule his heart, but he's trusting God for the promise of his future, and you and I should do the same. And he's encouraging and he's caring for those around him. What an incredible example for us in these days. In fact, Jesus got done just got done telling him just them moments before that the Holy Spirit is coming soon that they're going to have this experience of incredible intimacy with him in a new way. Jesus' peace is not something that you and I create on our own. It's a peace that Jesus brings and gives to us. He does the work. Look at what it says here in John 14, 27, my peace I leave with you. And the next part says, my peace I give to you, I, but I don't give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. These words here are significant in both the New Testament and the Old Testament. Especially in the Old Testament, this word is shalom. In Hebrew, it means wholeness, and it's a good word for us today. Uh, it's like the idea that there's, there's nothing out of place. All is right and as it should be. It's like a stone with all of its walls put together, solid, in place. There's no cracks, and it's, uh, it's, it's whole and complete. There's another aspect, uh, uh, fascinating aspect to the phrase, my peace I give to you. And I don't know if you know this, but it's a fascinating uh, concept, which is this was essentially a normal greeting or a way to say goodbye in the first century culture. It's a farewell to the disciples before he goes. He's saying, my peace I give to you. It's this kind of common farewell, even a common greeting like saying, hello, how are you, or goodbye for us today. But when Jesus said, my peace I give to you, he goes out of his way to say, but this isn't like the normal thing that everybody says all the time. I do not give to you as everybody else gives. I don't give to you like the, like the world. In other words, I'm not just saying this uh, as this normal greeting. There's a lot more to it. I'm not just being nice or social. I'm really going to give you peace that should help you deal with fear. Why? Because trusting in Jesus, the Prince of Peace, 
drives out fear. That's what Jesus' peace does for us. This is the kind of peace that Jesus gives, and it's why it's different from anything else. Jesus' peace displaces fear in our life. And that's my prayer for you It's over these next few days and in these weeks, is that we experience Jesus' peace that displaces or drives out fear. Here's a great way to think about this. Think about how we get oil from the ground. Sometimes you drill down and you begin to suck up that oil, almost like drinking uh, uh, water from a straw out of a glass. Uh, but that only gets some of the oil out of the, uh, the deep oil reserve. Oil has also seeped down into the little cracks and crevices or into the rock, into the subculture of the rock. And it doesn't just come out by sucking it up with something like a big vacuum. What has become a, a common practice uh, is displacing the oil. They drill more holes all along the big well and they shoot high pressure water down into those wells, literally forcing the oil out of those cra cracks and crevices and small areas. You're, you're displacing the oil with water. So there's no room left and the oil comes out. Isn't that a fascinating idea? Uh, we, you, you all know what WD-40 is, right? Uh, WD-40 literally stands for water displacement, the 40th attempt. Uh, there's a name, uh, that's, that's the name straight out of the lab book uh, that was used by the chemist who developed WD-40 back in the 1950s. Norm Larson was attempting to make this formula to prevent corrosion, a task which is done by displacing water. Norm's persistence paid off when he perfected the formula on his 40th try. In order to protect metal parts from rusting, they needed something that would displace water or push out the water. So when Jesus says, I give you peace, it's my peace and it's different than what the world gives, what he's saying is that it's his peace that drives out fear in our lives high-pressure, God-infused peace that forces fear out of all of its little hiding places. Isn't that good news for us? Isn't that a significant word for us today? And that's really good news because there's a lot of little things, a lot of little fears that can add up to big fears in our life. And I don't know if you've experienced that. Maybe that's another thing you could comment on in, this, in the comments section. Uh, little things like this. Have you ever faced a car issue that caused fear because fixing cars are expensive and maybe you have a few other financial issues that are coming along the way and you start asking, well, what if I run out of money, right? Have you ever had a difficult interaction with a coworker, a friend or a family member in which you were offended by them or you did the offending and all of a sudden there's this awkward relationship that you have to navigate? Sometimes we carry fear around uh, in little ways, not sure what to do next or how to approach different situations. Risk in general is just another aspect that is difficult. Most people are afraid to take any kind of risks in life. But what Jesus does is he says he gives us peace. Think of what Jesus did. Think of the risk that Jesus took to bring us that peace. He left heaven he came to earth as a baby, became one of us, and, and lived life all the way to the cross. Talk about a difficult journey. Jesus was willing to face what might have been fearful in his life because his peace rested on God. Fear can live in the deep crevices of our heart, sometimes in places that we can't see. Maybe if you were a kid, you remember those little dentist pills that you would chew and it would turn your, your teeth all the colors where you knew you, you weren't brushing like that. <laughs> and you can kind of see those parts of, of, your li of your teeth or maybe we can, through Jesus' peace, we can understand the parts of our life that need uh, his peace. And he says, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I don't give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Peace cannot live with fear because peace will always dislodge and displace fear. And that's what happens when we receive this gift from Jesus, one that he gives to us. So fear can be a significant area of reflection in our life. Maybe it's fair to say that wherever we experience fear, that's a place where we're not experiencing the gift of peace that Jesus freely gives. 
So how much fear is floating around in your life? And what areas are those centered on? Even if you can't see all the way to the end of what's, of what's next, we don't know how long this virus will continue, but we don't, maybe we don't need to see the end. We can just trust Jesus for the next step. And he can displace the fear that we experience in our life. In the most difficult moments of your life, what is your focus? Is it in and on God, trusting in Jesus? Or are you trying to control it? Is it on something else? As Jesus moves in, fear moves out. And I suppose if you had a perfect love relationship with God, there would be no fear. But it's a great place for a reflection and for spiritual growth. If you're growing in your relationship with God, then hopefully you're a little less afraid than you were last year uh, or yesterday. The question is, what about tomorrow? What will tomorrow bring? How will you be trusting in God, in Jesus and his peace? Receive God's peace for you today, for tomorrow, and a little more each day after that. Jesus' peace does not eliminate problems or obstacles in our life. It gives us the confidence to move forward, being wise in his power, especially as we take practical action for the sake of others in these days. And that's so important that we are experiencing Jesus' peace so we can be the hands and feet of Jesus in our world. So where is there fear in your life? Can you identify a place in your life and then where fear exists and then maybe spend some time with God in prayer around that area? Connect with some other people, your small group. Maybe you say, God, I've got some work to do. I need your help in this area. I'm fearful in this place. So let's get to work. And as we, uh, I want to say just as an encouragement as we end our time together, I want to read this to you. N.T. Wright writes this in his book, in his newest book. The story of the Bible is the heaven and earth story, the story of God and the world, the story of creation and covenant, of creation spoiled and covenant broken, and then of covenant renewed and creation restored. The story of Jesus is where all this comes to land, and it lands in the form of an invitation. This can and should be your story, my story, the story which makes sense of us all, which restores us to a sense, uh, it restores us to sense after the nonsense of our lives, the story which breathes hope into the world of chaos and love into the hearts of uh, and minds uh, around us. John 14, 27, my peace I leave with you, Jesus says, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Trust God, let him displace the fear in your life. Let's take loving action for those around us for the sake of others. This week, I want to encourage you to call some people, check in with your small group, check our website. There's lots of stuff there. Engage with each other in, different, in this different season of our church. But above all, do not be afraid. Trust in Jesus, for he gives us the peace that will drive out fear in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to you and we just ask that you, through the power of your spirit, reveal to us where there might be areas of fear or uncertainty in our lives and that we can take the time to say, to spend time with you and to say, God, is that an area of my life where I'm not fully trusting you? Can you help me with that? Spirit, come and just touch those areas of our life. God, we pray that your peace just enter in and displace all the fear that we might have, large or small, whether it's like a deep well of fear or it's fear in all the cracks and crevices of our heart, Holy Spirit, come right now and bring us your peace. And God, I pray that that peace is transformative to us as we, uh, we look out to others around us, as we, as we spend time with our family at our home, as we care for our neighbors, as we connect with our church members. It takes effort now to be able to do that since we can't be face to face. And so God, we just pray that your peace gives us confidence to step out and to be your people in this world the church has an incredible opportunity to show love and care to people who are afraid and uncertain. We love you and we praise you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Uh, check Facebook regularly for updates and encouraging things. Check our website to sign up for different areas that you can connect with or help uh, request prayer, those kinds of things. And we'll see you next week online for service.